welcome to Rudy Sassoo's Science Fantasy Experience. So I got a message from a subscriber through one of the many Facebook toy groups that I'm involved in and they asked if I would do a video on my Mint on Sealed card collection. And I said like collection, <laughs> I'm like I have about like six um, and they've all pretty much featured in some sort of video that I've done in the past like seven, eight months. Um, and then it became so much more than a message, it actually became a messenger conversation, which was really, really cool, actually. And so much fun. And I literally just said, like, I've only got six, um, but I can definitely do a video on it. If that's what you, you want to see, I can absolutely do that. So if anybody sees something on my shelves or in the collection that they want a video on, just message me or write, like leave leave a comment and I'll try the best to, to make it happen. You know, like any ideas for videos, send them my way and I'll, as I said, I'll, I'll try and do a video on it. But yeah, back to the Mint on Seal card. So I was just like, yeah, I've got, I've got like, they've all appeared before. And he was like, no, don't worry about it. Just do them. You might have a bit more time to, to go into a bit more depth and, you know, take it from there. And I was like, do you know what? I'm, I'm literally, I'm going to start planning it and get it to get it together. And then subsequently on Friday, Borders Dude, John Greve, did his Figure Force Friday and did a mint on seal card <laughs> video. And I'm like, oh, he's, he's, he's done one. He's kind of in some ways beaten me to it um, because I'd not actually mentioned to the Figure Force guys that I was going to do a video like this and as you can see it's not done through Figure Force my video of this so yeah here, here we have my six and when I was picking them out I was just like right that's from 93 that's from 94 oh well, where's this one from that that's from the 90s they're pretty much all mint on seal cards from the 90s, apart from one which is G.I. Joe, 25th anniversary, as seen on screen, Bazooka, which I'll, I'll do, do first. But the rest are all 1990s figures. What's hilarious with that is, I'd say, <laughs> post-1992, I didn't... You know, I was like 14 by then. I just didn't have any interest in toys to an extent or, you know, toy collecting was not in a teenager's mind. You know, I was skateboarding and doing Warhammer and role playing. Yeah, you know, that's, that, that's a combo. So, you know, the most dorkiest thing with the most extreme thing. But I digress. Let's have a look at some of my sealed cards. So as I said, I'm going to start with the 25th anniversary bazooka. You may have seen from my figure force video, the GIG bromance, that I love bazooka. He's my all-time favourite G.I. Joe character and I picked this up last year and I picked it up because yeah, maybe a, a year or so ago, maybe two years, I thought, do you know what? I I've got a pretty decent Transformers collection. I've got some random bits here and there. I want some Action Force and G.I. Joe. And I had not really paid much attention to G.I. Joe and Action Force over the past 10 years. I'd, I'd watched the, the, the live action movie and I just, I didn't know that there was such a thing in 2008 as the anniversary. And they're super cool because they just homage various aspects of when G.I. Joe came out, whether it be as seen in the comics or as seen on the screen or what the toy once was. And then they do beautiful recreated artwork and it's like a carded figure used to be back in the day when I was a kid and that always holds the real emotional grab 
having it feel like it is 1985 when you go to the, the toy shop or the department store and go and pick up your toys. And you can see there's a whole slew of all the different characters from the 25th anniversary. And as I said, there was a whole mixture, you know, they weren't all uh, seen on screen, like uh, Bazooka. Some of them were done to look like the comics. I know that the Cobra Commander got like two figures. He got a very traditional as seen on screen and he got a comic book one where he's much lighter blue with yellow accessories. So yeah, that is Bazooka. I don't want to spend too much time on this one because he, you know, he, he got his own figure force video. But I do want to carry on the theme of Bazooka because he's my favorite and this is G.I. Joe Battle Corps Bazooka that the man himself, Borders Dude John, gifted me for Secret Santa and it is, I do believe it's from like 92 and by that time I was literally, I had no interest in G.I. Joe and Action Force by then so I, I never even knew what Battle Corps or Battle Corps um, was. But what I love about this is the, again, the artwork. It's really different artwork compared to the mid 80s when you're looking at the early 2000s. And even though I now have two bazookas, they're both gonna stay um, on the card. It is tempting to open the, the first bazooka because my Alpine is out. Do you know what? If I ever get a 25th anniversary gunk home, then he will He'll escape from the plastic prison and then I'll have this one as the as the sealed one because I love the, the difference in in the artwork and what's exciting with this one is the card back is so much more detailed you get two of two pictures of these vehicles which I think by that that time the vehicles weren't they weren't as good as Previously, you know, you, when you look back at 82 to 85 and then when Tiger Force came out and they re-released those original, the snow car and various other vehicles for Tiger Force. They, those vehicles are so, so good. And then seeing these two, um, they're a little bit lacklustre in my opinion. <laughs> but what I was saying, this, this is the coolest part. There is so much more information than what there once was, and if I go up close, all of his combat fatigues are numbered and they tell you what it is. And for a massive dork like me, who loves information like that, I think it's really, really cool. As a kid, I would probably have no interest in, you know, what his fatigues were made out of. You know, what, what materials, let me read. Duo Weave Waterproof Spats, uh, J2J Pineapple Grenade Wrist Launcher. Super cool names, and it, you know, it shows off what what they are. This is a great mint on seal card, and as I said, I'm, it's never it's never going to come off. So that's my foray into G.I. Joe. Next up, Star Wars. And especially Shadows of the Empire. God, Shadows of the Empire is my absolute favourite thing of all time in the realm in the behemoth that is Star Wars. I've mentioned before that Star Wars is is so huge that you, in some ways, that's not really the right thing I wanna say. From my point of view, in terms of collecting, Star Wars is so big that I wanted to just choose one thing to solely focus on. That way I won't be disappointed, I won't open, I won't go down the rabbit hole, I, love it. I absolutely adore Shadows of the Empire from the story to the N64 game to the characters to the toys. I love it so much that I made a Let's Talk video on it so do please go back and watch that because there's so much more information than just me talking about a sealed card. But yeah let's let's have a look at these. So I have got two. I have got Leia and Luke Skywalker. I'm going to start with Leia first because she's the weaker 
of the two because she had a release in the normal kind of line with the, the green uh, I'm going to say sabre blade and then there was stuff that came in the blue sabre blade um, which has then part of the chest purple but it, it I feel like it's the same figure just repackaged so I'm not too overly fussed about um, the packaging in, in some respect for Leia and I'll get on to why when I flip it over but what makes these really cool and why Leia stays on the card is because I have a snoover and a dash rendar already open it's this there was two releases done with Shadows of the Empire and this this particular one is the American one with the lenticular hologram-esque design. I think future releases or the European ones were just a bog standard image. So yeah, that does the element of a kind of like a hologram, but as I say, it's lenticular. And the back features the whole wave and some of the extended packs from the original range so yeah all these were shadows of the empire figures so you can see print size or and a two pack with size or invader i actually want a size or with the the four shields if i ever come across one maybe at a toy fair or if i ever see one going cheap online i only want to spend like a fiver on it to be honest only because i've got already got like four figures and I've got Dash Rendar's ship. I'm good to go with Shadows of the Empire. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I don't, I'm not a completionist. I don't need to get every single figure that's released from a line. All I want is a little splat splattering of, of each. But the big draw for, for me in terms of Shadows of the Empire is uh, Luke in his Imperial Guide um, Imperial God disguise, if I can get my words out. Again, Lenticular, it's just a really cool, cool figure. Back in the day, in 96, I actually had a couple of these that I bought from, actually, a place called Games Galore in Wolverhampton. They sold loads of PlayStation games and N64 games, but at the back there was, like, trading cards and action figures and bits and pieces, and the guy had a couple of... Shadows of the Empire. So I had this one and I had a Spirit of Ben translucent Obi Wan figure, which is really cool. Again, lenticular. But in terms of this, you get to see the swoop bike, which is really cool. And Slave One. Slave One got a release through Shadows of the Empire. But why this one makes it more interesting is the illustrated artwork of Luke in this Imperial Guard disguise compared to, you've just got a still from the movie. That's an incredible picture for me. It really brings to life what Shadows of the Empire is. You know, it is a much darker affair. And once again, these are gonna stay sealed on card. So, final two. And we have got the Uncanny X-Men Wolverine. So I feel like, oh, when was this? Maybe the card back will actually tell me. No, it doesn't. Oh, um, uh, you know what? This is just literally a guess. I'm thinking it's 93, 94. And it's... It's Wolverine, and I picked this up at a car boot in the year 2000 for five pounds. I don't usually talk about prices, but when it's a ridiculously good price, thinking back, maybe like five quid back in 2000 was a pretty much a standard price for for this. But I've managed to keep it pretty immaculate for for 19 years because sometimes they just I've moved house and stuff has come into storage and out of storage. And it was just uh, an off-the-cuff impulse purchase at a car boot. I don't even think I bought anything else at the car boot because I was literally just happy with 
with this. And it was, I'm not the, the biggest X-Men fan. I liked the cartoon a lot, um, but I wasn't out to go and get action figures. But this one kind of struck a chord with me. And I think it's just because it's it's Wolverine, but it's not. I know it says Wolverine and the character is Wolverine, but this is, you know, it's before Wolverine was Wolverine. You know, he was literally just, you know, a, a secret agent. And, you know, he was a part of the Weapon X program. So, you know, he, he doesn't have his traditional suit and he's got some sort of extra breathing mask and I, you know I like a, a, an oddity it's not exactly the rarest of figures um, and it's got some pretty cool cool artwork again it's often it's the artwork that makes me want to keep a, a figure sealed um, in terms of the back you get you get to see a lot of the waves which is really really cool and it shows the battle battle action that's a pretty weak <laughs> illustration uh for me and it's a shame because you know that the bio is pretty good that artwork is fantastic and you know it's it's exactly how the the comic book the golden age of comics kind of looked like i think you've got this really <laughs> half-assed attempt at showing what what it does you know they could have taken photographs of the actual toy in a step-by-step -step sequential you know four steps on how to activate his arms but some of the other toys in the line are, are really really cool so yeah that has been uh, the uncanny x-men wolverine and then finally number six we have Star Trek The Next Generation, Dr. Beverly Crusher. So this is from Playmates. And again, I feel like this is 93. Yeah, that's 93. I love the packaging for the Star Trek Playmates stuff. It's evocative of the TV show and of the 90s. It's... There's so much colour, so much vibrancy. When you think of Star Trek, you think of the three colours, you know, the red for command, the blue for science and uh, yellow for engineering, and blue for science. And it's just all these colours are in there. The, the figures are always posed perfectly well in the vacuum packed plastic. You get the bio card and you get to see all you know, what they, the accessories that come with, you know, the high pass braid, the medical tricorder, you know, the portable metal, uh, medical kit, you know, the space tote bag. And I just, I think it's, it's super cool. And it's just, it's a power of nostalgia with this one, definitely for, for me. And as I, as I alluded to before, I wasn't interested in buying action figures when this would have come out, so it's nice to have something and get passionate about something that I had no interest in all this many years ago. And to have a quick look at the back, you can see what all the accessories are, and then you kind of get a little bit of the face sculpts of the other action figures. Which is, I understand why they did that, because the poses are pretty much exactly the same for each figure. This is really cool as well. And again, I just, I love the bios now. As a kid, I just wasn't interested in bios. I already kind of knew about the characters from watching, you know, all the cartoons or any, the properties that they, they came from. I knew the ins and outs of of the characters but now I, I love going back and, and reading these you know clearance for Starfleet level X only what does that even mean level X yeah I, I love this sealed card it, it's one of my favorites I just think it's it's really really cool I do want to get a Dixon Hill 
and then this can definitely stay on the card and uh, if I can pick up a loose Dixon Hill that would be that would be kind of cool so that has been my six sealed cards I have one more sealed and it won't be staying sealed for long it is a teaser for the next figure fours video because I ain't afraid of no ghost we have Diamond Selects Egon so stay tuned to the channel for the next figure force video but please do take care and I'll see you all again soon. Thanks. Bye.